Our guest today joining us is another Pittsburgh native. Went to high school at Upper St. Clair, attended his collegiate baseball at University of Richmond, was drafted by the Cleveland Indians, played 14 years in the, in the professional baseball, Sean Casey. Sean, thanks for joining us. What's up, fellas? How you guys doing, man? <laughs> Great, man. Thanks for coming on, Sean. I feel like the last time uh, – I might have seen you guys. You were little tykes. Really yeah, little. Tykes. <laughs> I can remember. We, pretty sure is at spring training down in, uh, or what? Yes. Where the Reds at the Sarasota. Where the Reds. Yeah, at yeah. Sarasota. Yeah, you guys yeah. were little. That's so great, man. <laughs> so great. I know, man. Great to see you on here again. Yeah, great to see you. No, yeah, Joe, Sean, it's great to have you. And uh, I want to get right into it with, for those who, your, your resume speaks for itself and Sean's nickname, which is The Mayor. Kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit. Being someone as as personal as you are, someone would get on first base. It's kind of I assume how you got the nickname at an early point in your career. Was there a little gamesmanship to that ever at times? I want to kind of hear if uh, you get the guy on base, distract him a little bit, try to get him off guard, or was it yeah. always your personality? Well, Mick, you know, man, playing pro ball, there's always a little gamesmanship going on. You know, you know you're, you're always trying to find an edge, but. You know, I, I learned I learned a lesson real early in my career <clears throat> when I was with um, when I was with the Reds. It was like my second year in the big my second week in the big leagues, and uh, I was just so excited to be there. So anyone that got on first base, I was like, oh my god, I just want to have a conversation with Mark McGuire <laughs> and Sam Sosa. You know, all the guys that you know. That was the summer of '98. It was my rookie year. It was so many awesome things happening, and uh, I remember Henry Rodriguez, who who played at the time for the Montreal Expos, real good power hitter. And uh, and uh, he came to first base one time, and I, and and I was just so excited to meet him too. I was like, I was thinking to myself, if I, if I stay this excited to meet these guys, I'm probably going to be out of the game soon because I'm not going to think I'm a big leaguer. You know what I mean? So like, right. Henry Rodriguez is on first base. A big thing in Montreal was whenever he would hit home runs, all the Montreal fans would would throw out um, O Henry bars, right? So they yeah. like pepper O Henry bars onto the field, and I remember. Ron Valone was, was pitching for us on the mound, and he was, uh, you know, he was a lefty. And I, I had just been up to the big league, so I didn't really know anybody's move at the time. And so I was holding on Henry Rodriguez, and I remember he gets his lead. And obviously he's not going anywhere because he didn't run well. And I, and I was holding him on, and, you know, I got my glove out, and I'm like, hey, man, I just wanted to say that's really cool that they throw those Owen Henry bars on the field in Montreal when you homer. And he turns to me to say, hey, thanks, man. And right when he turns, Ron Valone step uh, step off, pick over, and I'm like, oh my! I caught the ball. I caught the ball while he was looking at me, and I'm just like, ball, oh my God, my bad, dude. I was like, I'm really, a, I, I didn't mean to do this. Like, I'm not looking, I'm not looking for an edge. I was like, I just wanted to have a conversation with you, and it turned out it just went wrong. Oh, you know man. What I mean? so. I tagged him out. He looked at me like, this guy's a total jerk. And, you know, that was a lesson I learned. Like, when they get their lead, I try not to talk to them unless they're my good buddy. You know? Right, right. That's so funny, man. You didn't take one off the hip next to bat, did you? <laughs> no, no, no. No, I never did, which is good. But I yeah. could have. I should have. I should have. Yeah. 100%, man. No, that's a great story. I, I, I mean, I could listen to your – I'm sure your conversation stories for hours on, on people on first base alone, to be honest. Uh, there's some good ones. There's some good ones. I believe it. Um, something I wanted to get into, your longtime family friend, Sean, it's like we said, it's it's good to see you again. You're a good friend yeah. of our older brother, Jason. Uh, our dad, Jay, says hello, obviously. Our mom, Maria, says hello. You, you go way back with with all of us. And um, this – not even relating to that, but I just want to. Oh well, well, I mean, relating to, relating to that, which is so funny because, you know, I, I was, you know, my son's about to go to Dayton. He's 18 years old, and like that was when I was really like, you know, your your, your brother and I had the same hitting coach, Frank Porco. We used to hit all the time. You know, your dad would be down there just hounding your brother. You know what I mean? About hey, you gotta try to try this way. You know, try just to put your hands back. You know, so. You really? Know, and, uh, I never would have thought know. he would have done that. <laughs> <laughs> your dad was the best. Your dad cared. And he, you know, look at you guys, what you're doing too. But he was a go-getter. Um, you know, and it, it's funny because I remember going to, uh, and your mom's just, what a sweetheart of a, of a lady too. <laughs> but she, I remember we used to go over to your grandparents' house. Are, are they are they still are they still around or no? Uh, our grandma, Barb, BB, Barb, yeah, she's still around. Is right. she really? Yeah, oh he is. He is. We used to go over their house, and your dad got us this like aqua jogger. So we like <laughs> really? put this thing around our waist, 
me and your brother Jason, we're in the freaking deep end. I mean, I felt like I was running like that my whole career. So I was like, it's perfect. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean it seems like I'm in the deep end. Your dad's like, pump those arms. You know, we're at the track. We're at the track of those stuff. So it is, it is great, man. Your, 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 uh, your whole family has meant a lot to me in my life, especially your uh, mom, dad, and your brother. So it's cool to be hanging out with you guys. Absolutely. I was going to bring that up, actually, the aqua jogger. My dad was like, hey, we get, you got to ask him about the aqua jogger. <laughs> the aqua jogger. <laughs> I think we have it on video. I think there's a video. Bro, I, if you do, I want to see that thing. I want <laughs> to see that. I'll have to get it to you. <laughs> oh, man, that's so funny. Uh, like I said, off, off topic from that. But so baseball is a game of superstitions, as, as people, uh, you know, kind of say and uh, you know I've had my fair share I'm sure Mick has and you have probably I don't know if you call it a superstition internally but more of a well-known superstition where in between at bat every pitch you do your gloves <laughs> yeah was that in, was that intentional a superstition thing or just a habit and not even thinking about it god it was probably all of it it was probably a melting pot of what you just said you know I mean, really? maybe it started off as a superstition and became a habit and then it became such a my part of my routine like you know, it was, I had to do it, you know, and I, I did, I did a lot of different things. I still do it in my real life. You know I mean? I still yeah. like, I gloves and then I do the shoulder. Like I'm, I'm still doing the shoulder thing all the time. And like, my kids are like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm just stretching my shoulder. You know, like I'm making, I'm making eggs and I'm like, I'm like, oh man, you know, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I'm always doing this. Like, so I look back at my, like my, my hitting routine. I'm like, geez, I'm like, I'm still doing the same stuff in real life. But yeah, I did the batting gloves, and I would do the sh double shoulder. I'd do right. the hamstring stretch, and then I would lift my back leg. And, like – I remember that. Yeah. I, I, it was unbelievable. I remember Don Zimmer coming up to me, who was, you know, a longtime manager and, you know, was in the game, legend legend in the game, came up to me one time, and he was with the Yankees. And he's like, Case, he's like, I've been in the game 54 years, and I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen guys doing this, doing this. He goes, I ain't never seen anybody lift their back leg like you. I go <laughs> – I go, well, Zim, you stick around long enough, you're going to see it all, man. You know? And so it was so funny because I remember at spring training one time, I'm on deck, and we're playing the Yankees in, in, uh, in Tampa. And I look over, and there's Zim. He's yelling from the Yankee dugout, hey, Case, I'm on deck, right? He's like, Case. He's like, and he's, I look over, and he's like, hey, Joe, check this out. Do it for Joe. <laughs> so I'm on the on deck circle. And Joe Torrey's next to Zimmerman, Don Zimmerman, and I'm and I'm like a zoo animal. I'm like, hey, yeah, check this out. I'm lifting my back leg up for Joe Torrey and Don Zimmerman in the on deck circle, like you know, like hey, this is really funny. And Zim's on, it. Ah, he's laughing and Torrey's laughing. It's just, I mean, it's just so funny. So my routine, like in my routine of the gloves and the shoulder yeah. and the, and the legs and the and the uh, and my lift of my back leg, you know, became a routine. But yeah. maybe at, be at the beginning it was a superstition. <laughs> that's hilarious man I, that's like one of the best stories i've ever heard you did have you had to have one of the most unique beat pre-pitch routines of all time yeah easily yeah yeah i did i yeah. i did they're like you couldn't play today case and i'm like yeah i could i, I was i was still one foot in the box you know i was like right. i'm still doing uh, but right. i was always saying i always tell my kids i'm like listen you have 15 seconds 20 seconds between pitches to really like you know, get your mind right, take a deep breath, think about what you just saw, and then you got to do it again. And then you get yeah. out and you got 15, 20 seconds to get your process, to focus on the task at hand, to get so locked in mentally that you're ready to go. So, like, for me, you know, it was part of a routine, but part of it was, like, getting ready for that next pitch, like, just right. seeing what I just saw and, and getting a deep breath. So, in between all those shenanigans was no doubt a deep breath and I was definitely thinking about, you know, okay, was that 93, 94? Was it sinking? Was it down? Was it up? Was it, what's he trying to do? You know, so you guys know, you know, playing yeah. the game, they, you know, the thought process and, you know, that thought process and that routine probably helped me a lot to get me ready for that next pitch. Yeah. That's great advice for any players right there. Yeah. And, uh, and it, the, even in high school, did you have some sort of routine like that where you had doing the gloves or did it start more kind of collegiately and professional ball? I think I did the gloves in high school. It started with your brother, to tell you the truth. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, when I was uh, – I had one pair of batting gloves. You know, back in the day, you know, you guys, when you're playing, got 18 pairs of gloves. You got your own <laughs> bat. You know, we had a bat in high school. Like, you punch out, you give it to the next guy. Here you go, yeah. brother. Go get him. You know, it's yeah. one, one black magic. You guys have $400 bats, and everyone's yeah. got their Louisville, Marucci, you know. I'd say, wrong, it's a man. joke. I mean, you, you, I mean, these bat companies are making a, so, much, so much money on, on yeah. everybody because everyone has their own bat. 
So it's funny. I had one pair of batting gloves back, and I used to hit every day at Grand Slam, just in, in the batting cages. It was called Grand Slam then or Bethel Park. Yeah. Every day I used to hit after school. And those gloves would get so sweaty, like so sweaty. And I'm like, gosh, my dad's like, I'm not buying you another pair of batting gloves because we have no money and you don't need two pair. You know, that's just the way it was <laughs> back then. You know? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I would have to tighten them so tight to get them to stay on because they were so wet because I would hit yeah, all, yeah. I was so sweaty. And oh, so that yeah. was where my routine of the batting gloves initially started because then I didn't like hitting without tight batting gloves. So like, yeah. Yeah. but it started because I only had one pair and they were so sweaty because I hit all the time and that I didn't feel comfortable without tightening. So tightening them every pitch was huge for me. That's, that's wild. Yeah, that is. That's, that's awesome to hear though. Okay. Yeah, and then I got to the big leagues and Nike gives you like 8,000 <laughs> pairs of batting gloves. So then I had, sure. the pro I had the problem of sometimes I'd pull them too tight and I'd rip off the Velcro right in mid of bat. It'd be like, <laughs> and it'd be like in my hand. I'm like, oh man. And, and then, then mentally you're a wreck because you're like, oh my yeah. God, this isn't tight. This is like yeah. off me, you know? So, yeah. so it went to the opposite, you know? I, but I, I'd wear the, I, even in the big leagues, I'd wear my batting gloves like, you know, guys are like, Case, you're going to change us? I'm like, no, wait, not until the Velcro breaks. I just keep going, you know? <laughs> that's right. Oh, man, that's all. Yeah. Uh, next question, just going to be kind of a, a historic moment in your career. For those who don't know, uh, Sean was playing when this, the uh, PNC debuted, and you have the first official career or first home run at PNC Park. I don't want you to touch on that a little bit, what that was like hitting that at your home stadium. Yeah in Pittsburgh oh man well, it was cool for me because I'm a Pittsburgh boy and you yeah. know I, I went to so many games growing up with my buddies at Three River Stadium and and uh you know with my dad and stuff so that was you know the Buccos were my team and I remember in the off season seeing that we were opening up PNC Park um and I was so excited I was like man I remember thinking all off season, man if I just get a shot to get the first hit at PNC Park <laughs> That would be so cool. Like, I remember thinking that, like, I just, just want to have a chance to get the first hit. And sure enough, the, which was funny, was the series before we opened up Miller Park. And I ended up getting the first hit at Miller Park, which is unbelievable. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. At least I got one. You know, I'm one. Unbelievable. So then, so then we opened up Miller Park, and three days later, we opened up PNC Park. Just happened to be that 2001 was the year of new ballparks, I guess. And <clears throat> so – I come up and I look at the look at the lineup and and that day Bob Boone has me hit fourth and I'm like oh man I don't want to hit fourth I always hit third like I never hit fourth I'm like yeah. I don't want to hit fourth the day I'm a I got to get up in the first inning like I gotta I gotta have a chance yeah. to get the first hit at PNC Park like I'm a Pittsburgh boy you know so I was kind of bummed about that so sure enough you know opening day it's unbelievable you know Willie Stargell had passed I think that morning so. It was there was a lot of emotion in the air for right. especially Pittsburghers that loved Pop Stargell and, yeah. and uh, you know the opening of PNC. It's, you know you guys know how beautiful it is out there. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I'm hitting fourth, and Todd Ritchie's starting for the Pirates that day. He gets the first two guys out. I'm like, you got to be kidding me! This is how it's going to go down. Three up, three down. Pirates are going to hit, and then someone's going to get a knock. So Dimitri's hit. Dimitri Young's hitting third that day, and. He's in the box, and he gets – the Todd Ritchie gets him 0-2, and I'm thinking, I'm definitely not getting up. And then Ritchie tries to come in, and I think he hits him with a cutter. hits him in the ribs, and I'm like, oh, man, yeah. I'm like, this is it. I mean, this is my, this is my shot. I was like – and I love that about life or, or, and about baseball is that, you know, everything's in your control, right? Yeah. Like your thoughts are in your control. What you eat in your control. How you sleep's in your control. What, you know, all that stuff's in your control. Well, when you get in that batter's box – it's all in my control. And all those thoughts of, man, I really want to get the first hit at PNC Park, whether I do or don't now, it's in my control. Yeah. Right? And, like, you know, I, 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 got, I got a shot, you know. And so, so I get in there, and Todd Ritchie gets me 1-1. And I believe he throws me a 1-1 cutter. And uh, I can't remember what I had for breakfast, but I can remember pitches that were thrown to me for 20 <laughs> years ago. It's unbelievable. It's phenomenal. It's a, I'm, sure yeah, you guys yeah. know the, I'm sure you guys know the feeling. Oh, yeah. But he throws me a pitch uh, – I think it was a one-one cutter, and I just caught it. You know, I just caught it. That perfect plane caught, caught it, and I hit it and left my bat. It's one of those moments in my life that, you know, as soon as it left my bat, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like that's gone. Like I knew it was gone, and so it's so funny because I, you know, talk about an approach. I was just trying to hit a line drive up the middle and get the first hit, yeah. And I end up going deep to right wow. center, and uh, you know, I remember rounding the bases. I left seventy tickets that day. 
for family and friends. And, uh, you know, yeah. Frank Porco was in the stands too, who was such yeah. a, a big, you know, was such a, you know, a big figure in my life. And to hit that ball there with him there and in the stands, it was, uh, you know, a moment I'll never forget. And Absolutely. You know, like I said, rounding those bases, you know, being a Pittsburgh kid, all the games growing up watching the Pirates, you know, that, that moment for me will be etched in my mind forever. forever. Yeah. What that bat's in the Hall of Fame, isn't it? Yeah, they took the bat because it was the first hit and home run at Miller Park. So they, yeah. so they, it was, I was the first player in Major League Baseball history to open up two parks with a hit. So they took the bat. Yeah, and a couple of years ago, I'm sure you guys, I don't know if you guys did that Cooperstown experience when you guys yeah, were we growing did. up. Yeah. We so, did. so we, I went there with my kids a few years ago, and and Cooper, and then I went to Cooperstown. I know some people there, and they gave us the, you know, the the white glove tour. Yeah. And uh, and my bat was there, and it was just so cool because my kids have no idea if I play. I play, they just think I make the eggs and the freaking, <laughs> you know, chicken at night. You know what I mean? They have yeah. no idea that I was a good player. So I'm like, hey, your dad's bats at Cooperstown, guys. Get hey, check this out. One time. Yeah, yeah, check it out. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you'll be like, doing oh, that. Man. You'll be doing that, Ryan. You know, with with your, with your daughter one day. You'll be like, your, your dad was really cool at one point. <laughs> <laughs> really, I promise. I promise. Man, I can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. Going back to Frank Porco, I, that's something we all have in common because Mick and I, that he was our first hitting instructor. We drove from Butler every day when we were five oh. and seven. And then he was Jason's hitting instructor and obviously yours as well. And have you, have you ever, how's he doing lately? I don't know. Yeah. He's, ever, well, guess what? He's hitting with my kids too. <laughs> is he really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't think he doesn't give like hitting lessons anymore, but I was like, Frank, you've got to do me a solid. Like my kids aren't listening to me anymore, even though I hit 300 in the big leagues and I, you know, they just, I'm dad to them, you know what I mean? So I so saw I'm like, right. can you please hit with my kids? So he really does me a big solid. He hits with my both my sons and uh, you know, has helped amazing. them out tremendously. It's amazing with Frank, you know, not having played college baseball, you know, doing the job yeah. that he did, you know. And you guys know, and you know, especially when you play some pro ball too, like, you know, there's coaches out there that can't that might know hitting, but they don't know how to teach it. Like teaching yeah. hitting is not easy to look at a swing and say, Hey, do this, I see this. And Frank is – Frank's like that human, um, you know, video recorder. You know, he, yeah. he sees something with his mind and can able, is able to say it so quickly. And I just love that. And I love hitting him. I'm so grateful for him, obviously. Um, and I'm so grateful that he hits with my kids too. So, so I kind of slapped – I, I told Frank, you got to do it, man. You got to do it for me. Please, please, yeah. please. I, beg, I basically <laughs> begged him. I begged him. He's like, okay, you're so annoying. I'm going to hit with your kids because you're so annoying. You're going to leave me alone. Oh. What's uh, what's his age? How old's Frank? I think Frank's like I want to say to me he's always like forty one. But I think yeah, he's like, like no, I think he's like I think Frank's like seventy five. Seventy five, and he's still awesome. grinding. I'm sure when he was with yeah. you, he had bad knees. Well, he still has bad knees. So no, that's it's, crazy. It's like, been twenty his, years. Yeah, 20 yeah. Years. His knees never. He just he, he moves around. You know, he barely moves yeah. his knees. Yeah. That's he's yeah. still the man though. He's the best. He's the great. He's the I call him the you know he's the legend. He's he's the right. Zen master. You know, one hundred percent. A um, couple, couple fun questions here. I want to ask is going to go back to that two thousand one year. Just want to want to hear what it's like to to experience that from a competing experience of seeing Barry Bonds and what he did that year. The the wow. video game ridiculous <laughs> that he put up. Well, I tell you what, man, Barry Bonds is the greatest player I've ever seen. I mean. I don't know, steroids or no steroids, whatever, whatever you say. I, you know yeah. how hard it is to play the game. It's so yeah. freaking hard. I know a lot of buddies that I know or people that I played with that were on steroids that were terrible. I mean, they, yeah. were, they, they got worse. <laughs> right, the steroids right. got worse. Bonds was just, you know, he was – I always tell my kids, you know, go watch Barry Bonds. I never saw him off balance. You know what I mean? Like, you see even some of the best hitters. I've seen Tony Gwynn off balance. I've seen – you know, you know, some of the greatest players ever off balance. But Bonds, there was something about the way he could – and he always talked about he was trying to catch the baseball with his backhand. Yeah. And I used to love that because I always tell my kids, like, great hitters wait. You know, stuff that Frank used to say. you got to let the ball travel. you got to get it – you got to get it deep. And deep doesn't mean, like, back – like, I can't stand saying, you don't get it deep, you get it out front. Like, I can't stand that. Like, if you don't understand what you're talking about, you don't understand right. that. Like – out front is off your front leg. That's not – that's pretty deep. That's yeah. really deep. You know what yeah. I mean? And Barry Bonds was the greatest at, like, seeing the ball and seeing it so late. And his balance was so good. And the way he could just – the way he just used, uh, you know, his legs and his hands was Lower phenomenal. Half. And, yeah. uh, you know, 
it was special, Mick. It was just like it was, uh, you know, it was one of those things. You knew you were watching, for me, the greatest player of all time that, I've, yeah. that I'd ever seen. And I got a chance to play with Ken Griffey Jr. too for six years. And Griff's right there too. I mean, he's arguably the greatest player of all time too. But but Bonds was Bonds was something special. He really was. And his approach at the plate was like I've never seen. And that's why he walks so much too. Did you, what were some of those conversations like when he got the first? Did you know him pretty well or not really? I mean, I just, I mean, I remember when I first, when I first came to first, I couldn't, I, you know, I, I, I had to tell him I was a pirate fan right away. I was like, I'm a big pirate <laughs> fan growing up. You're just a good player. You know, like, I, I think, you know, that was one of my first yeah. things. Um, I remember in 2004, he and I were one and two in the batting race. And it was late. It was like September. He was hitting like, I couldn't catch him because he was walking. He'd go one for one with three walks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for one with three walks. You know, it was like <laughs> two for two, two walks. It was unbelievable. He, I couldn't, you couldn't get an 0 for four, 0 for five out of bonds. It was unbelievable. Yeah. So I think I was hitting like 345. He's hitting like 370 in September. And I just couldn't get him. And I remember the, this day I, I had two hits in San Fran. And I believe he, he got out and then he walked. And when he walked the second time, it was first and second. I was playing behind him. I remember him turning around and saying, you ain't catching me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, you're probably right. You're probably right. You're probably right because you, you can't go 0 for 4. You're like 0 for 2. It's yeah. it. <laughs> like, yes, so, sir, Mr. Bones. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, you're, listen, you're the greatest thing I've ever seen. You know, you're oh, unbelievable. Man. I got one more fun question for you. So you did play with Griffey, and um, you also got to play with Adam Dunn, two huge lefty power hitters. Now, who yeah. could hit a who could hit a baseball further in batting practice? Oh my gosh, are you serious? I was in their group too, and I I, I thought yeah. I had some pretty good pop, but I felt like yeah. Tony Gwynn in their group. I'm like, holy <laughs> crap, these these guys are just lost. I mean, Dunner's hitting them out of the stadium, like, right? Right. And Griff Griff's just Griff had one round. We we had a round, and you know, our last round in our group. You know, the last round, you know, first couple, you go the other way. Second couple, you, you, you're you spraying the gaps. And then the last round in that group, Griffey would always say, okay, all right, fellas, it's grown folks round. And grown <laughs> folks round meant if you didn't hit it dead center, grown folks territory, it didn't count. So, no. I mean, it was unbelievable. And Griffey, Griff would get in there and just go, wham, wham. And just and then Dunner would get in there and just wham. And Austin Kearns was in that group, too, and he was a monster. Yeah. He would crush balls. And so it was kind of cool. Like, so – Every time in that group, you know, the, our last round was the grown folks round, where if you didn't go dead center, it didn't count. So it was kind of, it was kind of fun. And you know, they both. Cru I mean, I saw Adam Dunn hit the two furthest balls I've ever seen in my entire life, of changeups. One off Jose, one off Jose Lima and Cincy he hit one dead center. It was before the stacks were there, and now you look out there. There's like that riverboat that wasn't there. It was just nothing. It was just the like conference center in the in, in center field. It cleared the conference center, went out of the stadium, and it landed on the road. No, I swear to God. If you guys have to go no, try I think and see it, how far I've seen a video. I think I've it seen a video. It landed on the road and bounced into the river, and then he did it again. Smoltz threw yeah. a change up, and he did it off Smoltz. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So he just two of the furthest balls I've ever seen hit were from Dunner. But Griff was just – you know, one thing I loved about Griff is that he wasn't a big weight room guy. You know, he just was a strong dude. His dad, Ken Griffey Sr.'s big back. They're just strong guys overall. And, you know, what was unbelievable was you'd always wonder, like, where's Griff putting his work in? Like, where's Junior putting his work Well, what was great was every day he'd come out super early, like 2 o'clock, and he'd, he'd get a guy to throw BP to him, and he'd hit BP by himself. And all he would work on was hitting homers. He never worked like going the other way, yeah. but he would like, he would do it Homer wise. Like he'd go the yeah. other way, three, the other way homers. That's three, awesome. Dude. Three dead set. <laughs> and I, I remember going out there a couple of times with, I, I was like, could I join you in a couple of times? Yeah. He's like, come on out. But Ken Griffey Jr. You know, you wonder why guys are really good. Like this guy was every day hitting early and he was literally just trying to go deep. It was unbelievable. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. That's unreal. <laughs> Well, Sean, we appreciate you hopping on, man. It's a uh, it's a pleasure catching up with you and hearing some 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 of your knowledge that you've experienced throughout baseball. And we look forward to now following your boys with uh, their journey heading forward here, uh, playing baseball collegially, hopefully professionally here in the yeah. future. Yeah. Well, hey guys, I appreciate it. It's great hanging out with you guys. Like I said, man, it's been a long time, and yeah, look forward, definitely. man. We can do it again down the road. Absolutely, man. Anytime, tell you tell your awesome. folks and tell Jason I said hi. 
We definitely will, man. For sure. Same to you. We'll do. Okay, fellas.